video we will discuss the bony features of the mandible the mandible forms the lower jaw and it is the only movable bone in the skull apart from the ossicles of the ear it consists of a body and a ramus so we will go one by one in detail of these bony features of the different parts of the mandible if we discussed about this body this body has this upper border and the lower border this upper border is also known as alveolar arc which lodges the teeth so this upper border is known as alveolar arc this lower border is u shaped similar to the horseshoe shaped so this is the lower border and this is the upper border the upper border is known as alveolar arc and the lower border is u shaped apart from this upper and lower border there is an external surface and an internal surface on this external surfaces there lies a symphysis menti below the symphysis menti there is a triangular protuberance this triangular protuberance is known as mental protuberance this mental protuberance has two sides so these two sides is known as mental tubercle so the apex of this triangular protuberance there lies a symphysis menti which joins the right and the left side on the right side and the left sides there lies a mental foramen these mental foramen lies below the incisor teeth so on the external surface we have discussed symphysis menti a triangular projection and these triangular projection has two side angles which is known as mental tubercles and this triangular projection is known as mental protuberance so on the internal surface there lies this prominent line this prominent line is known as mylohyloid line so the portion above this prominent line this mylohyloid line this is known as submandibular fossa and the portion which lies below this mylohyloid line is known as sublingual fossa so inner surface on the inner surface we have discussed a prominent line which is known as mylohyloid line a portion which lies above this mylohyloid line is known as submandibular fossa and the portion which lies below this mylohyloid line is known as sublingual fossa at the base of this mylohyloid line there lies four spinous processes two superior and two inferior if we go to the chin we will see two depression over here these two depression is known as digastric fossa so the internal surface includes mylohyloid line submandibular fossa sublingual fossa four spinous processes two superior to inferior and a chain which contain two depression which is known as digastric fossa the body of the mandible continues posteriorly with this quadriangle plate which is known as the ramus so this ramus basically has two interior processes and two posterior processes this interior processes is known as coronoid process here you can see these interior process on the right and the left side this is known as coronoid process and the notch between this coronoid process and the posterior process is known as mandibular notch this is u shaped mandibular notch on posterior this process is known as condylar process the interior process is known as coronoid process and this posterior process is known as condylar process this condylar process will form a joint with the temporal bone which is known as temporomandibular joint so this was the upper border of the ramus and this is the lower border this lower border this forms the angle of the mandible so this was the external surface we have discussed that the external surface also have a oblique line so this is known as oblique line on the external surface of the ramus we have discussed two processes the interior process which is known as the spinous process and the posterior process which is known as the condylar process and then we have discussed the angle of the mandible now we will see some parts in the inside surface of the ramus inside of this ramus you can see there is a foramen here you can see a foramen this is known as mandibular foramen it continues with the canal over here so there is a canal below the mandible this mandibular foramen continues into the canal 
in this mandibular foramen there is a spinous process over here this is known as lingula this spinous process in this mandibular foramen is known as lingula below this mandibular foramen there is a groove so this is known as mylohyloid groove so in the internal surface we have discussed this mandibular foramen this mandibular foramen it continues into the canal this mandibular canal a spinous process which is present above this mandibular foramen is known as lingula this is known as lingula and a groove which is present below this mandibular foramen is known as mylohyloid groove this condyle this upper portion this was the body and this is the neck so condyle this neck portion internal surface of this neck there lies a pterygoid fovea so on the interior surface of the condylar neck there lies a pterygoid fovea so now we will conclude today we have discussed about the bony features of the mandible the bony features of the mandible comprises of two main parts basically it has this front part which is the body and posteriorly it has a ramus the body has upper border and a lower border the upper border is known as alveolar notch and the lower border is u shaped on the external surface of the body if we discussed we have this center point which is known as symphysis menti and a triangular protuberance at the angles of these triangular protuberance at the lower two angles these two angles is known as mental tubercle then we have discussed there there is a mental foramen on the right and the left sides below the incisor teeth on the internal surface of the body of the mandible we have discussed about mylohyloid line a prominent line which lies in on the internal surface of the mandible which is known as mylohyloid line the portion which lies above this mylohyloid line is known as some mandibular fossa and the portion which lies below this mylohyloid line is known as sublingual fossa below this we have discussed two superior and two inferior spinous processes these are known as genial tubercles then we discussed two depression over the chin which is known as digastric fossa so this was all about the internal surface of the body of the mandible there is oblique line which divide this ramus with the body this body posteriorly communicates with the ramus and this ramus has this intern interior portion and this posterior portion the upper border we can say and the lower border so on the interior surface of this uh, ramus there lies two spinous processes these are known as coronoid processes the process which lie below this posterior lead to this coronoid process is known as condylar process this condylar process has a body here you can see it has a body and a neck this condylar process communicate with the temporal joint forming temporal mandibular joint on the internal surface of this condylar process there lies a pterygoid fovea then we have discussed about the mandibular foramen which lies on the internal surface of the ramus this mandibular foramen it continues into the mandibular canal and there lies a spinous process above this mandibular foramen this is known as lingula a groove is present below this mandibular foramen is known as mandibular depression or we can say that this is called mylohyloid groove so this was all about the bony features of mandible I got no love for the fakeness if you wanna play tough